When was the last time you did a job just for fun because you wanted to do a project? This is something I used to do all the time back in the day as a way to practice my skills, try to learn new stuff, but I haven't had the chance in a while. And it's one of the coolest ways to get to learn not only how to do new things, but also test out the capabilities of your machines. Today, we haven't done any surfacing really on the VMC2 from track. I found a really cool project. Let's take a look at this one. This was a ton of fun. This machine's light. You can move it around with a, with a pallet jack. It's one of the features. And now we get into the really fun stuff. So one of the coolest things about being a machinist to me is, you know, as humans, we all have free will. Very few people out there have the ability to take something in their head and then actually make it in the real world. You know, it's gotta be the coolest thing about manufacturing to me. If you can think it and you're smart enough or at least you're clever enough to figure out how to do it, you can make whatever you want. So I was thinking about trying to test out some more capabilities of this machine that we don't usually get a chance to work on. And one thing we haven't done a lot of in it is surfacing. You know, 3D tool paths, small step over, and so on. Most of the stuff we tend to run in here tends to be, you know, blocks with holes or, you know, contours, which is fine. That's what we run in a lot of our machines anyway. But I thought, you know, this thing has a controller that I have not used as much as some of my other machines, just in terms of we have one of these, we have 10 of other machines. I don't know how this thing surfaces. So for the track VMC2, I thought, all right, let's come up with something cool that would be fun to surface. So as you guys know, I'm up here in Canada. It is late November. We have a massive snowstorm coming in later today. I live kind of by a lake and I don't get to go ice fishing that much. And I was thinking about that the other day and I went, hey, I've seen guys online make their own fishing lures before by making molds. And I went, that can't be that hard to do. So what we did, we actually went and found a model of this because I just wanted to see how they work. I didn't want to try to design something from scratch. So this is just a stock model off the internet, but I wanted to try it out because if it works cool, well, maybe I'll make some for myself and for my guys. You know, a lot of guys here go fishing. So what we're gonna do today is we are going to make fishing molds. I actually have the finished product right here behind me. Um, we're gonna go upstairs and we're gonna take a look at the programming on this. You know, we did program this in Mastercam, but this is what we ended up making. So what it is, is it's a two-part assembly. It goes together just like this, and it has a hole in the end for pouring in your liquid plastic. Um, liquid plastic you can buy online, so I have some coming. We're gonna pour it and see how it works out. But as you can see, there's some nice surfacing in there. Um, let's take a look and show you how we got this one done. Okay guys, so here is the model we found online. Um, you know, this is a very basic model. Whoever did this did a good job. The only thing I will say is there is some geometry that we probably could have messed around a little bit more with, such as this line straight down the middle. Um, it has a very, very small radius in the bottom there. And while that's fine, you know, you don't know what kind of tooling they designed this for. Maybe they were 3D printing it. Um, for our tooling, because we only went down to a, a 1 8 ball nose, it did get a little chattery just right in there trying to hit those tiny little cusps. So when you see a little bit of the what I would call fish scale in there. We're gonna leave it because it looks nice. There is a little bit of that in there. That has nothing to do with the machine. That has nothing to do with the processor. That's just the way we set it up. But fortunately the walls turned out super, super smooth. Um, so we did get a good test out of it. But anyways, I digress. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and use our surfacing tool paths to do this. But to start, let's get a top on this. Actually, let's do isometric. Let's get crazy. So the way we're going to start this, we're going to go in and mill the outside. Uh, a lot of this, we were using tooling that we already had in the machine. So we already had a half inch end mill in there. So when we go to run this, you will see, we're going to go and clean up that whole outside. And you can see that it's doing a nice ramping tool path. Um, again, this machine is really good at milling fast or milling side milling. You don't necessarily want to take big, heavy passes with it because it's BT30 spindle. Again, this is aluminum, so we're probably being a little bit conservative. But again, we're not trying to break any world speed records here. This is a free spindle, we're just having some fun. So my outside is all cleaned up there. After that, let's move on to our next, oh, next contour. So using that same half inch end mill, this one's gonna come in. This one's really just gonna go and clean up that outside, get a nice finish pass. 
Again, just because we're doing something for fun doesn't mean that it can't look nice. So we go, we finish that up. I don't think you need to see that whole toolpath. After that, we are gonna go start doing the pocketing. Now, if you look at this, you can see there is a lip. I know we made, we made some geometry here that might make it a little difficult to see. You can see there is a lip here that fits into the other side in order to seal this mold. Again, there is a top and a bottom. I'm just gonna show you the bottom that we're running on right now because they're essentially the same. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and pocket that out with a quarter inch end mill. So let's take a look at that tool path before we get into the fun 3D stuff. So you can see we're just gonna come in, use a helical entry, and we're gonna be going around and pocketing out that whole interior cavity. Not the actual fish cavity, we're just hogging out the cavity that sits below the surface so when the two halves meet, there is a lip. Again, we're being nice and conservative, we're just having fun. So you can see we're just stepping that out. We're gonna clean out that entire inside portion. We're gonna pull up our quarter inch ML one more time. This one's gonna come in and just run a nice little finish pass to hog out that material where that vent hole is going to be. Easy peasy. Next, we're gonna start hitting that interior pocket. So for this, we're gonna use a 3 16 ball end mill. Let's pull up our tool path here. So you can see that this is gonna come in and start roughing out that entire inside portion. We're stepping that down. We're using just a surface rough pocket tool path for this. Um, as you see after this is done, this is just that kind of semi-finishing path we're doing. Could we have gone in with a flat end mill first and then done this? Sure, um, you know, this is fine. Again, we're not trying to kill cycle time. We're not trying to break any world speed records. This is just going in and finishing out, uh, hogging out that pocket so it's ready to go. So if you look nice and close, you can see we're doing lots of steps, lots of step overs. And now we get into the really fun stuff. We use a surface finish parallel for this. So I'm gonna pull this up. This is where we start to have some fun. This is gonna bring in that 1 8 ML, uh, ball nose ML. And as you can see, it's gonna be stepping over one side to the other. This may be kind of why it chattered a little bit in the middle as well, it was trying to go over those little cusps. But you can see that this is gonna finish from one side to the other. Uh, we're doing a very small step over on this, trying to get that finish really, really nice. And I was really surprised how well the VMC2 tolerated this. You know, with smaller machines, sometimes they struggle with surface finishes. So on a bigger machine where you have a big, heavy base, you know, a casting in there, it's gonna help dampen a lot of the vibration and keep things rigid. That means any kind of surfaces are gonna be very, very smooth. This machine's light. You can move it around with a, with a pallet jack. It's one of the features, right? That said, in the walls especially, you know, where I'm gonna discount the inside, we got super smooth finishes considering we did one finish pass and it didn't really take that long. You know, I'd be happy with that kind of finish with a 1 8 ball nose out of any machine. And on top of that, we used a four flute. We didn't have a two flute for aluminum on the shelf just because we don't do a lot of this. So we just grabbed a four flute and had fun with it. And it still turned out as good as I could hope. The only thing we did add to this, which we did not include in the uh, file here, is we did add a vent hole through the back because the model did not have one. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we are going to go grab some of this plastic, heat it up, and let's try to make some fishing loads. So all in all, this was my first time running I have any kind of surfacing in a 30 taper machine. The one advantage you have to a machine like this is it's got very, very short travels. It's got that 10,000 RPM spindle. And I mean, the processing on this had absolutely no problem keeping up with the program. We're gonna try these out this winter, see if these work well. And if they do, you're gonna be seeing some Lakewood lures coming at you very, very soon. So there you have it, guys. I hope this has been helpful. Again, if you wanna find out more about the Track VMC2, you can look it up. You can ask me any questions you have. And of course, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.